Hey guys, MEP Guy here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to make my MEP Guy custom P trap. Now, the Revit P trap that comes out of the box looks just like the one I've created, but when we change our detail level to medium, and then we rotate this Revit's out of the box fitting, you can see that just a line appears, and that's not what we want. What we want is when we rotate it, we want this P trap symbol to show up. So again, if I rotate it, you can see there's a P trap symbol. And then the one out of the box from Revit is just a line. So I'm gonna show you guys how to create this little symbol inside your P traps. So the first thing we need to do is open this P trap family up from Revit. So what you can do is you can go to file or insert, sorry, load family. And then I'm at the folder domestic waste vent. So if you go to program data, Autodesk, Revit, libraries right here, you can find the P trap. And the P trap is going to be called trap P. So we can go ahead and open that up. Now I've already loaded that into my project. Once you place it into the project, go ahead and click on edit family. And now we have the P trap opened up. So the first thing I want to do is I want to change the part type to an elbow and that way it will function as an elbow. So let's do that. So now that we have that, what we're going to do is we're gonna put an annotation family inside this P-trap. So to do that, we need to create an annotation family. So we'll go to File, New, Family, and we'll go to Annotations this time. So let me show you on top down. So we'll go to Program Data, Autodesk, Revit 2020, Family Templates, English Imperial, and then we'll go to Annotations, We'll go to generic annotation and double click and then we'll just zoom in and we can delete this text box and now i have my family editor right here so i can start creating my symbol we're going to use masking region so i'm going to click masking region and we'll start with a circle and i'm going to make the circle i don't know an eighth of an inch so one over eight inch and I just realized that I want the diameter to be an eighth of an inch. So the first trick I wanna show you guys is anytime you want to divide by two or, or multiplication inside this little box, all you have to do is put a little equal sign in front and then just divide it by two. And that'll get you a 16th of an inch, which is an eighth of an inch diameter. And now that we have this masking region, anything inside the masking region is going to be invisible or masked out. So now we'll go ahead and finish this off by hitting the green arrow or check. And we have our first masking region. So now I want to create a different line type for this annotation. And I'm gonna show you why we're gonna do that later. So I'm gonna go up to manage and we're gonna to go to object styles. And you can see under object styles, I have this category called generic annotations, and that's going to be inside Revit, and I can change the line weights of those. But I wanna create a new one, so I'm gonna go down here to new, and we're gonna call this P-trap symbol, and we're gonna hit okay. And now I can control the thickness or the line thickness of this P-trap symbol line type. We'll click okay. And now I need to create that on this masking region, so I click the masking region, I go to edit sketch, and then when I click the line, you can see the subcategory, I can change it now to this P-trap symbol. And now I have control over the line thickness. So I'm gonna finish that off. So now that I have this created, I'm going to actually save my annotation family. So we'll go to file, save as family, and we'll go to where we keep our family files. I'm gonna to go to annotations, and you can see I've already created one called P-trap annotation. So let's just create a P-trap annotation two we can change our number of backups to one hit ok and save it and so now we have this p-trap annotation two created and so all i need to do is i need to start creating more annotations and we're going to add them into this one so i'm going to go up to file new family and we'll do the same thing annotations we use a generic annotation we'll delete this and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert that other family into this one. So we'll go back to that P-trap annotation two and we'll load it into the project and we'll load it into the family two that we just created. So now it's loaded in. And so I can zoom in here and I can place it right there. Now this is uh, the only reason I did this is so that I could get the line type into this file. So now when I go to create and we're gonna create another masking region, it's gonna be a circle. 
and I'm going to create it at an eighth of an inch, so one over eight. Oops, I messed up again, so let's change that to one over 16. That looks good. And now again, we can change this to P-trap since we inserted this one in and we can finish it off or we can move it before we do that. So I'm gonna move it into the place that I want it, which is right here. And I also need the little Pac-Man lines. So we're gonna create those. So we'll go from the center at a 45 degree angle to here. And then I'll just mirror this across. So I'll use the mirror pick axis. And then we'll trim this, so TR. And then we'll pick these two lines right here. And now I have this masking region. So I don't actually want these lines to show up in my symbol. So to do that, we can highlight the lines and change the subcategory to invisible lines. And anything you create on invisible lines will not show up in your annotation. So we'll finish that off. And then you can see when we click, it shows up as just that Pac-Man symbol. So this is great. So now I can actually remove this symbol because I don't need it anymore. So I can just delete it. And we can just move this to the right of the intersection point right there. And then I can actually load this project into the other one. So I'm gonna load it into my P-Trap annotation two. And you can see I can load it and just place it right there. And that looks good. So I don't remember if I put it on the right family, so I need to make sure I edit the sketch and we're gonna double check. Yep, we did put it on P-Trap annotation, so we're good. I don't need to close that out, but I am gonna finish that off. So then we have our little annotation symbol. Now the reason I'm layering these is so they show up correctly when you mask them. And that's just the way uh, masking works in Revit. So we're gonna create one more annotation symbol and I'm gonna go up and create a new file again. So we'll go to file, new family, annotations, generic annotation. And again, I'm going to delete this and load my other annotation symbol into this one. So this time let's load this one in. So we'll load it into the project. We'll load it into family three and we'll just place it right here. And then I have to create a line. So we'll go to create and this time we'll use a line and we'll use that P-trap symbol line. And we're gonna go from the middle here and we need to go to a point where that circle is. So maybe I shouldn't have placed this one in, but that's okay. We can always create a line for reference for us or sorry, a circle. So let's create another circle here, just like that. And let's just pull this to the end. And now we can delete this. We can delete that. And we can actually place this in the center here. So I'm gonna move it just like that. And I'm gonna load this into my P-Trap annotation too. And now it's loaded in. I don't remember if we placed it on the correct layer. So let's double check that. Okay, it's on P-Trap symbol, perfect. We're gonna load it into P-Trap annotation and it's loaded in, but we can't see it. So we actually need to go down here to families, annotation symbols, and family three, I need to just drag it in. And then now that it's dragged in, I can place it right there. So that's essentially our annotation with all of our masks included. So now that we're done with this, we can save it and it'll be saved under that P-Trap annotation too. And we're gonna load this annotation into our P-Trap but before that, we have one important step. We need to create another family. So I'm gonna to go to new family. And this time, we're not gonna create an annotation. So we'll go to English. And we're just going to scroll down to generic model face based. Open. And then we're gonna load in our annotation symbol to this family right here. So this is called family four right now. And I can save it. So I'm gonna hit the save button. We'll call this P-Trap Annotation Face Based. We use one backup, hit save. And now I need to load my finished annotation symbol right here into this face based project. So we'll go load into, and now I have it right here. And we can just place it right in the middle. So that looks great. So we can save it. And now I'm gonna load it into my P-Trap family. So let's load it into the project. And this time we'll select our trap P, schedule 40, hit OK. And now the family has been loaded into the project. Now we need to place it on a face. So I just know from experience, we need to place it on this face right here. So I'm gonna click that point. And now Revit has created 
that face-based annotation or that face-based family on this face. Now you can't see it because it doesn't show up in a 3D view, but it's there. So the way we can determine it's there is if we go to the left view, so let's open up our views, elevations, left, and we'll zoom in here. Now we need to be able to find this annotation symbol. It's not showing up right here, but here's the trick. If we go down here to generic models, you can see the P-Trap annotation face-based was loaded in. And now all we have to do is right click, select all instances visible in view. And you can see it shows up at this location right here. Now we need to move it, so I'm gonna use my move command, and you can see it's right here, okay? So I can select it, and maybe we can just move it right there for now, okay? Now I'm going to align it to the center of this circle or P-trap. So I'm gonna use my align tool, and I'm gonna click on this reference plane, and then since we moved it, we know it's in this location right here, and you see how it highlights. So we'll click it, and we'll lock it, and then it's right here now, so we'll click this reference plane, and then again, we'll select it, and we'll lock it. And now it's right in the center here, we just can't see it. So I'll hit escape, hit escape, and now we are essentially done. So both those generic models and our annotation symbol got loaded into this project. So now that we're done, we can load this family back into our other project, so we go load into project and we'll load it into our main MEP guy fittings template. Hit OK. And we'll just overwrite the existing. And it looks like nothing happened. So when we rotate this, you can see it's still not working. But there's one more thing we have to do. So let's go back to our P-Trap family. And the last thing we have to do is we need to do something really tricky. And this just took me a while to figure out. So I'm going to go back to my face-based family. And what I need to do is I need to use this shared parameter right here. And what that will do is it'll apply the same properties from this family to my P-Trap family. So I also need to change my family category. And so we'll go to pipe fittings right here. And we'll make sure it's an elbow. And you can see it's shared. So let's click OK, and then let's load that back into that other P-Trap family. Trap P, let's overwrite the existing version, and now we'll load this into our main project, overwrite the existing version, and as you can see, the P-Trap shows perfectly. Now, the last thing you would need to do is remember we created that special line type, and so we would need to make that thickness of that line type the same thickness that we're using for our piping, okay? So the way we do that is we go up to view or manage, object styles, and we're going to change, go to annotation objects. And let's just go to our generic annotations. We'll hit this plus, and you can see the P-trap symbol that we created is at a line weight of one, but let's change that to three, and then we'll hit apply, and you can see it got thicker. And we'll hit okay, and now we've created this P-Trap family with this symbol inside. So now when we rotate it, you can see the symbol does in fact show up. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now all of these fittings are available at my website, mepguy.com. And basically these fittings are the most common fittings you'll use for sanitary and vent piping. And what I would recommend is using these for every single project. These are the only fittings you really need, and so you can quickly load these into any project. If you go to mepguy.com and download this, you can copy these into any project, and I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of a couple tricks on how to do that. So uh, I hope you guys uh, check, them, check it out at mepguy.com, and I will see you in the next video. And also, if you want to learn how to use all these fittings and when to use them, check out the next video.